What a Dubon community, it is I, Brian, that's B-R-I-A-N, and this is mail time number four. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, welcome, and to those who have uh, been watching my videos, you know, previously, welcome back. And um, yeah, this is mail time number four. I know I haven't done, I haven't posted that many videos as of recent, but, um, got some of these records a while back, wanted to show y'all in the mail, um, but, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into this. So I want to start off by showing y'all some of the recent reissues, uh, specifically from, uh, Analog Productions, their Prestige Mono and Stereo series. So I want to start off with this right, right here. This is Jackie's Pal. This is Prestige LP 7068. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, Jackie McLean and introducing Bill Hardman, which uh, I know, I only know a couple of uh, other records that Bill is in. Um, you know, I obviously know who Jackie McLean is and these other fantastic musicians. You got you know, Mel Waldron on piano, uh, Paul Chambers on bass, and Philly Joe Jones on the sticks. But yeah, um, Analog Productions are doing a fantastic job reissuing these. Because uh, y'all know, or if you don't know, um, originals of, of these types of records, especially this one, goes for a lot of money. So, this is a... Uh, Great, great record. Another uh, Analog Productions Prestige reissue. I've been waiting on this one for the longest time. This is uh, Red Garlands, or the Red Garland Quintet All Morning Long. This one I had my eye on for, I want to say, a year now. And when Analog Productions put it out, you know, put it back in stock, I just... Um, yeah, this is, this has a freaking phenomenal lineup. Um, you know, obviously side one, you only have one track, but, um, and then, you know, side two has only two tracks, but this right here, Chef's Kiss, uh, the lineup here is... John Coltrane on tenor sax, Donald Byrd on trumpet, Red Garland on piano, uh, George Joyner on bass, and Art Taylor on the sticks. You know, I didn't know about this until recently. Uh, George Joyner, who was in the Ahmad Jamal trio for, you know, a few years, uh, I didn't know that was his, you know, his, his, his name. Because he, he has a different name, and I want to look it up before I butcher it, or before I say, you know, the wrong name. But, um, yeah, I was like, that, I was like, who is George Joyner? So when I, you know, when I was listening to this, I actually had to look it up because I was very, very curious. I was like, who's George Joyner? And uh, it happens to be uh, Jamil Nasser, or Nasser. Um, you know, he's in... A good number of uh, Ahmad Jamal records. Uh, the Awakening, that's a really good one. That I get this, you know, comes out of my head. Uh, he also has an another name in his recordings. Name. He goes by uh, Jamil Suleiman. And so that, I, I, I thought that was very interesting. Uh, because, yeah, when I looked at the lineup, the one that I was not very familiar with was... George Joyner, and then I, you know, come to find out that, uh, he goes by a different name, which is, you know, completely okay, uh, you know, you learn something new every day, and I'm happy that I know of this, and, uh, if y'all don't know about this record, you should stream it, I don't know if it's still available, 
on the uh, Analog Productions website, but uh, if it ever comes back, hop on it, because this, uh, this is a great record right here. And, you know, fantastic lineup. Uh, one more uh, reissue from Analog Productions that I have here, It and this is one that I've heard since, uh, let's see, I want to say beginning, uh, yeah, my first year of college. I think this is when I really started to listen to this record. Um, this is another one that I was looking forward to, and when it came out, back in stock, I mean, I knew I had to get it. Uh, this is Tenor Conclave, or Conclave. This features Hank Mobley, Al Cohn, John Coltrane, Zoot Sims on the tenor saxophone. Um, the the opening here, which is uh, Bob's Boys, that is, uh, this is what made me want to get it, the opening of the first track on this record. You know, this is one that I would play nonstop while I was walking to school or when I was heading uh, home from school, or just even when I was, you know, wanting to just listen to music, to listen to, to jazz. This is a fantastic, fantastic record. You know, Prestige LP 7074. Um, this one, was, it came out in 1957. Uh, line up here. You know, you got Hank Mobley, Al Cohn, Zoot Sims, John Coltrane on the tenor saxophones with Red Garland on piano, uh, Paul Chambers on bass, and Art Taylor on the sticks. Again, this is just another phenomenal record. Uh, I think last time I saw this on the website, it was still available, um, but this was like maybe a few weeks ago. and. Yeah, I'm surprised it's not, maybe it's still not sold out, and I, I've just been waiting for this to be, uh, repressed, uh, because it, when I saw that, I know that, uh, OJC has a reissue of this, and then, you know, the original pressings, which goes for a lot of money, um, there was a time where I was, constantly looking for this particular record could never find it and if i did find it it was just a buttload of money um but yeah this is a dynamite of a record everyone should own if you're into jazz all right uh let's stick with the you know i'm going with these reissues that i have here so i've shown you all three prestige reissues now i want to show y'all one blue note reissue you know y'all if y'all been watching the uh channel y'all know that i've made a video of uh, me showing these classic records reissues and i have no complaint no complaints about these records uh so when i saw this that classic records reissued this I was like, I'm definitely going to get it. Uh, this is one of many Lee Morgan records uh, that Classic Records reissued. Uh, this is uh, Lee Morgan Indeed. This is Lee Morgan's uh, debut on Blue Note. Blue Note 1538. This... Uh, Again, this is the classic records reissue, and I just love how they re replicate the original, uh, like how the original uh, records came out, you know, with the deep groove and the the uh, label here. Um, <clears throat> so this originally came out on that um, seven sixty seven Lexington Avenue uh, address, and I gotta say, Lee Morgan so impressed the fact that okay so if y'all don't know on this record lee morgan was only 18 years old uh when you know during the session 
And when I listened to this for the first time, I was mind blown because this is, it's, I'm surprised that, you know, a, a teenager at this age can play so beautifully, um, if that's even a word, which I'm pretty sure, you know, he plays so, so great. Um, and then, you know, you have these little, I guess, session photos. Uh, but yeah, the lineup here is Lee Morgan on trumpet, Clarence Sharp on alto sax, Forrest Silver on piano, Wilbur Ware on bass, and Billy Joe Jones on drums. Um, <clears throat> can't remember when this record came out. Original pressings of this, I know, go... I saw one uh, earlier today. I think there was a OG press of this on Discogs going for 5500 So, <laughs> yeah. Good luck find, trying to find this record. Uh, I know Music Matters did a, a reissue of this as a du uh, double 45. Um, I was planning on, on getting that, but when I saw that, you know, Classic Records did this, I was like, you know what? 33 and a third. It's my go-to, but I also like the 45s, and I've been, I've been on this, um, uh, Music Matters kick, where I want to buy more Music Matters, but I've been holding off because I know Blue Note, um, you know, the recent reissues are, have been coming out and have been announced, so... Maybe one day this will be out as a classic series. Um, but yeah, Lee Morgan, indeed. It's just an awesome photo as well. But speaking of Lee Morgan, I um, I think I've gotten maybe four out of... I can't remember how many uh, classic records put out. I think they might have put out a lot of his uh, earlier books. Um, Blue Note titles. I'm still missing maybe three more. So, but those three, which is uh, The Cooker, City Lights, I think that's what it's called, and, and, uh, ooh, I forgot what the other one's called, but those three are hard to find in the, uh, on the secondary market. So, if I ever find one in the wild, I know I'm gonna get it. I already have The Cooker as a Tone Poet release, so I still want to get the um, the classic records just to to see what what it sounds like. Um, been enjoying it, but moving forward, uh, a while ago I I showed a record um, by this particular musician. Um, I got the Analog Productions reissue which, um, you know, sounds good. And this is on Contemporary. This particular musician does, is just incredible. Um, I'm talking about Curtis Counts. This is the Curtis Counts group. This is on Contemporary C3526. Um, yeah. This is OG. I I knew I was gonna find one at some point. Um, managed to find a clean copy of of, of you know the record. Uh, the back cover is like meh, like it has you know writing, but I don't mind it. And you can see the musicians on here, which uh, the lineup here is. Where is the lineup? Here it is, okay. Jack Sheldon on trumpet, Harold Land on tenor sax, Carl Perkins on piano, Curtis Counts on bass, and Frank Butler on the sticks. Yeah, I just, when I f heard this record for the first time, I was just in love with the music, especially, especially uh, side one, track two, called Time After Time. That. Something about that track just 
always blows me away. Um, from, you know, the piano playing to the, um, the, you know, tenor sax solo and, and everyone else on this, in the track. But more so, you know, the whole album. You know, what's interesting, um, <laughs> what's interesting, you know, I was like looking at, sometimes when I'm, uh, don't recognize a certain name on a record, I will look them up to see if there's, if they've been on other records. Uh, one that caught my eye <laughs> is, uh, Jack Sheldon, this guy right here. Uh, you know, Jack Sheldon, amazing jazz trumpet player, who was actually on, uh, Schoolhouse Rock. He did, um, I'm Just a Bill, just trying to remember the, the, the names. I'm Just a Bill and, uh, Conjunction Junction. And he did others. But those two, if, if you grew up with Schoolhouse Rock, or if you were, you know, if you've if you ever watched Schoolhouse Rock at school and you just remember those two songs or I mean I guess other songs if you recognize his voice um uh, when I when I found out that that's the guy who you know sings I'm just a bill I was like what I was mind blown uh and this was just recently um, actually, as a matter of fact, this was like when I was listening to this record uh, on my turntable for the first time, and I, I'm still blown away because, again, I guess you can say Jack Sheldon was is a part of your childhood, uh, at least you know to those who have uh, who uh, watched Schoolhouse Rock. Which I'm pretty sure a lot of us did, um, but uh, if you, you know, maybe know him more as a trumpet player, but yeah. Anyways, Curtis counts. This is a phenomenal record. I hope uh, Kraft does a reissue of this and Volume Two because uh, again, I don't see that many people talk about this this record. Uh, I don't know if it's because people don't like it or just people don't know about it, but this, maybe it's because of how the, um, uh, cover looks. Maybe some people will be like, oh, this cover looks not that good, so it's probably, the music's probably not that good. But no, I give this a two thumbs up. This is a must listen. So yeah, Curtis Counts. The Curtis Counts group. Next up is a record that I did not expect to own, um, mostly because I, uh, because of what Joe Harley said. Was it Joe Joe Harley? I'm pretty sure it was Joe Harley, the the, the guy who runs or who is a part of the you know Blue Note reissues. Now, um, when he did the uh, interview with. Um, Michael Ludwig's at 45 RPM. Y'all probably already know where I'm going with this. So I'm uh, just gonna show y'all the record. Talked about how this is not gonna get a reissue because of the master tapes. Um, can't remember if it got lost or if it just wasn't good. I can't remember, but this is Duke Pearson's Sweet Honeybee. Have the stereo version here and uh yeah again i was just just a record that i did not expect to own because ever since ever since you know that that interview many people have been buying this record because they want to own it because you know there could, there might not ever be a reissue of this, but I think there there will be. But you know, time will tell. Um, Duke Pearson, phenomenal composer and piano player. Um, 
this is a dynamite of a record. I love, I love every tune on here, and it's, it's just I love it because, you know, all it says right here, all compositions by Duke Pearson, and the lineup here, fabulous. You have Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, James Spalding on alto sax and flute, Joe Henderson on tenor sax, Duke Pearson on piano, Ron Carter on bass, and Mickey Roker on the sticks. I mean, you have some talented musicians on here, and I just love how, um, you know, the flute playing on here with, you know, the piano is, it, it is so, so, so good. Some of my favorite tracks on here is Gotta Be After the Rain, Empathy, uh, Gaslight. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to say all of these are my favorite. This is, a, this is, I haven't um, listened to that many Duke Pearson records. I do have another Duke Pearson record. Uh, what is it called again? This one, Duke Pearson, The Phantom. This is the... Uh, Tone Poet reissue. Duke Pearson needs to get reissued more. Like his stuff needs to get reissued more. Like stuff like Wahoo and I can't even remember the other names of his records, but yeah, I just I hope Duke Pearson gets more uh like mo more of his titles get reissued because he put, he put out a ton of heat and this is one of them and the fact that we're probably never going to get a reissue of this sucks but you know you can always you, you know you can stream it um but you know it just sucks because uh not everyone can own this. It's it this I will say this was a bit pricey, but uh the the guy that I that I bought it from um had a best offer so I gave him or I asked him what his best offer would be and he gave me a reasonable price for this. And this is you know a clean record. So I'm very happy to have this. Um I already listened to it and everything and this will forever be with me because <laughs> um, I don't think I I don't think I'm gonna need a cleaner copy of that. Moving forward, uh, these last two records are from the same musician. Um, been listening to a ton of his records, more so his um, been streaming it rather. Uh, without further ado, I'm just gonna, first one here is Bill Evans, Portrait and Jazz, the Bill Evans Trio. This is one of my favorite piano players of all time. I mean, who, who, who doesn't love Bill Evans? So, this is on Riverside 12. 315 and this happens to be a second pressing second mono pressing uh so very happy to have this listen to it and you know no problem the uh the wax here very nice you know um Bill Evans, Bill Evans Trio, rather. So it has, you know, Bill Evans on piano, Scott LaFarre on bass, Paul Motion on drums. You know, this, you know, despite the, uh, the little tape over here, and I guess in the back too, this is a phenomenal recording by the Bill Evans Trio. And you know, Scott LaFarre died way too young. Um, who knows what would have, what just more great, beautiful stuff would have been recorded if he was still, uh, if he had, you know, lived a longer life, but 
um, yeah, I believe this is Bill Evans' second record on the Riverside. His Riverside stuff has been going for a lot now. Last but not least, his uh, Bill Evans' third record on Riverside. This is Everybody Digs Bill Evans. This is on Riverside 1129. You can see, you know, quotes from Miles Davids, uh, Ahmad Jamal, uh, George Shearing, and Cannonball Adderley, which happens to be his birthday today, uh, by the, at the time of this recording. So, that's awesome. Uh, here I have the second, I believe this is a second stereo press. Um, yeah. So my two Bill Evans have been second pressings, which I don't mind. Um, the lineup here, and again, the music on both of these records are beautiful. Um, I don't necessarily have a favorite for for any Bill Evans Riverside records, if I'm being honest. I love them all equally. Uh, but anyways, the lineup here. Uh, Bill Evans on piano, Sam Jones on bass, Philly Joan Jones on the sticks. Let's see. Them. <clears throat> the trio. Right there. And, uh, yeah, you know, whenever you got a stereo release, you would, usually, when it's a mono, you would get, like, a another picture or session photo of uh, either the musician or the musicians right over here. But when it's, but yeah, anyways. Uh, the wax on here is actually very nice. Let's see right there. Again, very fortunate to have come across these two records, actually all of these records, if I'm being completely honest. To, to be able to get Waltz for Debbie, uh, Bill Evans Waltz for Debbie, or, and his uh, Moonbeams, or Moonbeams, sorry, um, and uh, Sunday at the Village Vanguard, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. I feel like um, I don't. I, I don't think it would be impossible. I don't think impossible is the right word. But these records have been going for a lot, and I know Analog Productions is putting out their uh, Bill Evans Riverside box set. But nine hundred dollars for that? Oh, I don't know. I I'm still thinking about it. Um, but for now, I've just been looking for either, you know, first presses is probably not going to be, uh, you know, on my radar. But uh, early reissues or repress, like, you know, the second press or, or a semi-later, but still early um issue of this of these records or even OJC's uh maybe the you know early uh early 80s OJC but it's kind of hard to 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 tell like which one which ones uh came from the master tape and which ones you know which one's digital so again there are other records that are also on my list um but yeah that concludes this uh, mail time. My plan is to upload another video before uh, October, or by the end of September. I'm hoping to upload another one. I have some records that are on my watch right now, and hopefully I can get them on time before October. But uh, if you don't see a if you don't see a video of on this channel uh, by the end of September, then I'm more likely to upload it, you know, early October. But again, 
my goal is uploading another video by the end of uh, this month, September of 2022. If y'all stuck around to the very end, thank you. I greatly appreciate you guys. Um, you know, drop a comment of what y'all have been uh, collecting these days. There has been a ton of reissues and it's just overwhelming because I've been wanting to grab a lot of these reissues of, you know, from the Blue Note stuff to the Prestige, to the Craft, to the, um, uh, these recent, uh, there's these recent Bethle Bethlehem reissues. I can't remember from what, uh, company, but also Impex. Impex has been, have been putting out some pretty cool stuff, um, but yeah, it's just so overwhelming. Hope you know. Hopefully, I can get some of these uh, before the end of the year. I feel like I have been a bit behind on getting these stuff, but you know, everyone has their own pace. Uh, but yeah, it'd be awesome to to know what y'all have been getting in your collection and what y'all have been spinning um you know drop a comment and let me know what records y'all want to see me get uh and uh it'd be cool if y'all would you know give the video a like that'd be cool or share it with a friend or subscribe that would that would mean a lot uh but yeah Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see y'all in the next video. Take care.